The Triceratops of Hell's Creek, yes there was more than one species, and you probably never knew they existed. A trend in early dinosaur media was the epic showdown between the Tyrannosaurus Rex and Triceratops, a battle of two iconic titans fighting to the death. This depiction is based off the fossil remains found within the Hell's Creek Formation of America. And from those early days, the Triceratops has remained as an iconic symbol in dinosaur media, although the exact species depicted is often overlooked by both audiences and producers. Jurassic Park predicts a base design of a Triceratops, but what species exactly is anyone's guess. So, without wasting any more time, let's analyse the different species of Triceratops and any close cousins found within the Hell's Creek Formation of Montana. First discovered in 1887, the Triceratops, or three-horned face in Greek, is a large herbivorous dinosaur measuring in at 26 feet and 6 to 10 tons. One of the most recognisable dinosaurs of all time, the Triceratops sports a large bony frill and three exposed horns with a quadrupedal body stance similar to the rhinoceros. Triceratops belongs to the Ceratopsia clade, a group of beaked herbivorous dinosaurs with many members, some small like Cytacosaurus and Protoceratops, and many large members such as Strikosaurus. The latest in a long line of Ceratopsians, the Triceratops emerged 68 million years ago in the twilight of the dinosaur's reign, before going extinct from the asteroid collision. Currently, two species of Triceratops have been identified, T. horridus and T. prorsus, although numerous Nomandubian members have been proposed with an equal number of arguments attached. I don't want to talk about it, so I won't. Me, personally, I don't give a shit, but paleontologists kind of have to, it's their job and everything. But what I do give a shit about is subscribing to the channel. This video took me a while to create, mainly because my drawing skills are rubbish, but to help me improve, consider subscribing and liking the video. Living in close temporal relativity to one another, both species exhibit only minor differences, and are what would many consider to be the ideal triceratops. The most notable differences being the curvature and size size of the horns. The nasal horn of T. prorsus is considerably larger than T. horridus, while inversely having shorter orbital horns and a less elongated frill. The snouts can also be distinguished with the snout of T. prorsus being shorter and deeper than the elongated design of T. horridus. Their sizes are almost identical, with T. horridus being slightly larger. Despite their similarities, these two members are considered different species within the same genus, with T. horridus and T. prorsus living in separate locations, with T. prorsus restricted to Hell's Creek and Frenchman formations, and T. horridus found in Southern Lance, Laramic and Denver formations. The Triceratops preferred the lush forests and swampy marshlands found in the late Cretaceous, made possible due to the shrinking western interior seaway. With the frequency of Triceratops fossils decreasing the further northwest, you travel from the Hell's Creek formation. The preference for moist and shaded areas may have similar reasons as today's elephants, partaking in mud baths to protect their skin from sunburns. The Triceratops does not possess a trunk and would have greater difficulties in protecting its exposed skin to the harsh sunlight. This may have restricted the viable habitats and movements of the Triceratops, worsened by its robust frame, ill-suited for long migrations. With a downwards orientated skull and low position to the ground, the Triceratops prioritised grazing low growing vegetation, although the Triceratops may have been able to break smaller plants and trees using its jaws and sheer size to reach higher growing sources of food. Behind the beak, the jaws were lined with numerous teeth arranged in groups called batteries. Containing 36 tooth columns, where 3-5 to five teeth would be stacked. This meant the Triceratops would be constantly chewing its food and replacing its worn down teeth. With such a high tooth count and frequent replacement, the Triceratops likely consumed high fibrous plants such as palms, cycads and even ferns, and would spend most of its day foraging and chewing food to support its massive size. The growth of Triceratops is defined by four unique stages, baby, juvenile, subadult and adult, although a fifth large juvenile stage can be considered. The defining features of each stage is the size and development of the horns and frill, with juvenile members having posteriorly directed post-orbital horns and delt-shaped epoxytals, epoxy 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 
epoxy petals, epoxy petals. The triangle bumpy things that artists put on the frill. The recurvature of the post-orbital horns from posterior to anterior or forward-facing signals adulthood and sexual maturity. The pronounced epi epoxipitals, the pronounced epoxipitals, dear God, recede with age, creating a smooth edge along the frill, meaning many artists actually depict a sub-adult triceratops in their drawings, likely taking inspiration from Jurassic Park. <laughs> but not me, right? It is unclear how long it would take a Triceratops to reach adulthood, but considering its coexistence with T. rex, which reached adulthood by 20 years, the Triceratops likely reached a similar stage around 10 to 15 years, similar to today's elephants, which reach sexual maturity between 10 to 14. And speaking of Tyrannosaurus rex, did the T. rex and Triceratops fight? The simple answer is yes, they coexisted. Who would win? an adult triceratops. Like all other predators, the T-Rex would target juvenile members or sick and injured prey, as opposed to a healthy bull triceratops. A quick search on YouTube and you can find videos of adult African buffalo actively chasing and killing lions. And this role reversal would be no different 65 million years ago. But what you'll find interesting is one fossil remain of a triceratops horn that contained two very deep and large depressions. Said depressions aligns with the dentition of T-Rex teeth, indicating that the horn was bitten during a predation attempt. X-rays revealed lesser tooth marks along a frill fragment belonging to the same Triceratops. This discovery gives direct evidence that T-Rex would target the protruded horns and frill of Triceratops. X-rays also revealed healing and regrowth around the tooth marks, evidence that the Triceratops survived the encounter. The horn and frill of Triceratops has long been interpreted as either a visual display or combat apparatus. Analysis of the Triceratops skull revealed increased lesions along the squamosal bone of the frill when compared to a Centrosaurus. The pattern observed is consistent with Triceratops using its horns in combat and the frill being adapted as a protective structure for this taxon. What this means is that T. horridus and T. prorsus would use their large horns in jousting or headbutting tournaments while simultaneously using their frills as a protective barrier. The larger nasal horn of T. prorsus may indicate an additional behavior of upwards headbutting, similar to modern rhinos, an effective tactic to bully smaller competitors without risking damage to the orbital horns. Now to discuss some close relatives to the Triceratops genus. Living in Hell's Creek was the Taurosaurus, a close cousin to Triceratops. Often disputed over its validity, the Taurosaurus was of equal size to Triceratops, but can be distinguished by two large openings in the frill and downwards orientated orbital horns. Coexisting with Triceratops, these two large dinosaurs likely competed for resources, but remained as the dominant species of their respective niches. In stark contrast to the Taurosaurus and Triceratops was the Leptoceratops. Measuring up to 2 meters and weighing 100 kilos, this ceratopsian was pitifully smaller than its larger cousins. The lack of horns and protective frill align with early ceratopsians, like Cicatosaurus, making this dinosaur particularly vulnerable to predation, such as juvenile rexes and Dakota raptor. The Triceratops of Hell's Creek, yes there was more than one, and an exhausting number of arguments for others. Seriously, go check out the wiki page. If you enjoyed the video, then support the channel by hitting the like and subscribe button. I appreciate all the support you give me. Stay tuned for more content, but either way, thank you for watching all the way to the end, and I will see you in the next video.